Oh, man, just chill this man down. What's up? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm not through watching that episode. I've got, uh, I got to the point where, uh, uh, hold on for a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put forth some effort to um, remember these characters' names. I'm trying to compete with you on that. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever beat you, though. I'll, I'll, I'll never beat you. Actually, in that area, I want to be just like you when I grow up. <laughs> but, um, oh, well, I, I just have to say, Cliff, Method Man's um, um, character. And, um, when him and his, 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 um, um, companion, you might as well say, are into it in the court, and she was telling him that um, she should, he, he should have never, um, got involved with that. Yeah. That, I love the way, um, this episode is put together. Actually, um, so far, it's one of my favorite episodes. Right. Because of the way it's written. And that stripper, man, she lucky she said she wanted to run because Tyreek was really getting ready to go there. Yeah, I was hoping. I was, I'm glad he didn't. I was like, man, please don't do it. Well, you know, you have to keep in mind, um, this, this, this show is based upon Frankenstein. Right. Yeah, you talking about this episode. And, um... Yeah, it's, it's, it's based upon the whole concept of being turned into a monster and accepting the fact that you're one. Right. Like, um, um, what's her name, told him, yeah, you know, yeah. you're a monster, you know, you're a monster, and I'm one, you know, and, and the, the sooner you accept that, the better off it is. That's like what I was telling you I, um, that, that night when, in meditation, the creator told me, you're evil, but you're a necessary evil. Right. You know, so stop trying to be totally good because there's no such thing. You know, that, that comes from the religious mindset, you know, this demands and expectations of religion, you know, we're all going to be good people, we're good people, ain't no such thing as anybody good. There's, there's, no one is good and no one is totally bad. But considering the um, circumstances, like they were saying, because I, I read Frankenstein when I was in high school, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and um, read order that book, but um, I want to um, find the right one off of Amazon. I just I just don't want to read just any Frankenstein book, because I've, I've always been... Um, you know, excited about the whole Frankenstein concept. Right, yeah, there's been a lot of studies about that. Yeah, because see, I'm, I can, I'm sorry, but I can relate to it. You know, that's why I used to tell people, uh, do you blame the monster or do you point your finger at the creator? of that monster because see Frankenstein wasn't really the monster Victor Frankenstein was the monster yep and it's kind of like uh, you remember when Kane was talking to his mom uh, Mary J Monet he was like you made me like this and you could tell he wanted to cry mm-hmm. so you, you just like the whole Frankenstein concept that he probably wouldn't have been that way had she not molded him to be a killer like that Right, and you remember when when you and I always talk about when 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 we talk about um, how our dads made us. Yeah. And you and you remember how I used to tell you, do you think I want to walk around here feeling like this and thinking like this about my father? I don't want to feel like this. I'm gonna, you know, that's you know something I've been waiting to ask you all night or whatever. I was like, man, because. I had overheard somebody say that you shouldn't hold grudges or whatever, and I was like, man, I, I thought about us as far as how we felt about our fathers or whatever. I'm like, man, well, th- what do you say to somebody like us or whatever? It's like, how do you, you know, people say you shouldn't hold grudges, but I'm like, how do you, well, how are you supposed to feel about somebody like that when they have robbed you of that, that, that bond that you always wanted? You, you're supposed to have them, they didn't stole that from you. How do you, how do you not have a grudge or be angry towards a person like that? Cause I'm like, I, can, I don't even think we could forgive them the way we want to because it's like that that we haven't been made whole or whatever. I, I don't know how to reconcile the whole the whole grudges. I feel like that's a religious thing. I, and I ain't saying just be walking around angry, but like, how do you not have no angry feelings towards somebody, you know, like that? I don't even think that's human or, or possible, you know? 
the whole grudge implication, Josh, is fictitious. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, though, because I can't. It, it is. I, I, I can't reconcile that. Just like that, because like, you know, me, you talk about forgiveness and how there can be no forgiveness without resolve. I'm like, well, shoot, a lot of people ain't gonna, be, they, they ain't gonna ever be able to be forgiven. Just like you know, when you think about black folks, black folks, I was talking about forgiving white folks. We can't forgive them. It's impossible. The only way we'd be able to forgive them is if they went through everything we went through, and that includes slavery, being slaughtered, and, and I'm talking about for hundreds or maybe thousands of years, then we could forgive them. But until then, the debt will never be paid. Because see that that whole grudge thing is fictitious. That's coming from someone who is standing on the outside, who can't feel what you feel. You know, it's 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 the way that you've been molded from a child, and the way that you've been molded and um, created in that particular area. That was without your consent. Right. And see, and, and, and this is what, what people don't understand. And when when you have, you remember that that other episode when when they were talking about are we fundamentally good or bad? Yeah, that was I think that was early now, this season, right? Yeah, yeah. Now fundamentally, we have good intentions. We do. Some some of us are born with bad intentions, but fundamentally. Everybody at some point in their life is fundamentally good, and this is this is the reason why childhood is so important in a vital time in our lives. When you see kids on on the playground and uh, something goes down with kids, a child gets into it. Um, about a swing or a slide or something and the two little kids get into it if you leave those kids alone if the adults would leave the kids alone then those kids would, would, would not hold any animosity towards each other they would just go right back to playing and then, and then the next thing you know you see those same two kids just playing and having a good time right. see that's the fundam- that's the fundamental goodness but when um, the badness starts is when the parents get involved you just come over here you just play over here and you separate those kids and you keep those kids away from one another and see and, and when you keep those kids away from one another you don't give them a chance to demonstrate or redemonstrate their fundamental goodness towards each other. Right. See, it's the it's, it's the parents that hold you. See, that's where the grudges come come from. You don't do that to your kids. That's not what you do. You 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 go up and you say, "Well, I I wanted to get on the swing. Okay, okay, but let him swing." You know, for a little while, and then after he's done, then you can swing. And then after that, you know, done, those two kids are going about their business. And that fundamental goodness between those two children continues. What 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 happens is when this so-called adult mind comes in to the thing, simply because those those adults have already got some things that are unresolved in certain areas in their lives and they refuse to re, uh, resolve those things that's where the whole grudge implication comes from Right. and so when people like us have parents who are narcissists where you want to resolve things with them so that you won't no longer feel this way about them just resolve it it goes back to earlier conversations that that we had let's sit and talk about it just like just like you just got through saying there can be no forgiveness without resolve none forgiveness without resolve and so without resolve the non-forgiveness is the whole grudge implication where you're holding grudges I'm not holding anything I'm not given the opportunity to resolve my differences with my father he is not allowing me or us to resolve these issues so simply because we are not allowed to resolve these issues 
then that puts us in this, you must say, prison of being left to feel neglected, abused, and all of these things. So we have to learn how to let it go. And the only way that you're going to have peace, you got to let it go. And so when you let it go, and you get past all of that, then those who are looking on the outside saying, well, did you try to resolve the differences? Well, you hold and grudge it. Oh, don't, don't, man, don't, don't let that grudge uh, um, implication bother you. You know, because that's coming from a person who has no idea the depths of your disappointment, the depths of your hurt, and actually it's really not their fault. Because no matter how uh, much you try to explain it to them or we try to explain it to them, they'll never know because he's not them. Right. They'll never know. If not us, it's the parents. But how, do you, that's, 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 but, but how do you let something? Well, I'll let you. I'll let you finish. No, no, no. Go ahead. I said, how do you go let ahead. something go? If, but at the same time, you know, because it, it kind of goes back to the whole the, the, the way we've been taught to get. As they say, you know, to forgive and let go or whatever. But it's like, well, if you if you let go, but then you don't want nothing to do with that person that you so called forgave them, then how is that forgiveness? I mean, it's just it, to me a lot of stuff that people say forgiveness. I'm like, to me, that don't sound like forgiveness if you ain't inviting that person in your life no more. Or you got your guards up. That ain't forgiveness at all. No, For, forgiveness and letting go are two different things. See, you see, because it goes back to what we were saying. The only way that you can forgive them is by way of resolve. Now, if they don't want to resolve the issue. If you want to walk around and, and, and deal with all that hurt for the rest of your life, that's a choice. That's, that's just like, uh, I, I told you before, this, this, was, this was years ago, I think this was back in um, 2014. If I come up and put a hot piece of coal in your hand, that's my fault. But if you choose to hold on to it, then that's your fault. Right. So what are you going to do? You're just going to hold on to it. It's burning. Ah, oh, why you do this to me? I, the only thing I did was put in your hand. Why are you holding on to it? You, you can't blame me if you choose to hold on to it. Let it go. Because if you don't want to deal with the pain or disappointment anymore, and and you understand that this other person is no nowhere close interested in resolving the issue, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep holding on to that? Because you're not going to be able to forgive them because they don't want to talk about it. So what are you going to do? You're going to keep holding on to it? Or you're going to let it go? You have to let it go. Okay. Letting it go does not imply that I forgive you. Letting it go implies self-preservation. It's self-preservation. I mean, it's almost like Somebody coming up, um, stabbing you or shooting you, and you decide that, well, I'm not going to go to the hospital. I'm just going to heal this myself. I'm inside of a laundry right now. I'm, 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 I'm going to tend to this wound myself. So tending to the wound implies time. And understanding that I'm hurting only because I'm healed. And see, that's between you and yourself. Because you know that each moment and each minute that goes by, it's going to get better and better. I don't, I don't care how you feel. It's going to get better and better. And as the pain goes away, the stress goes away. Those feelings of hurt goes away. All of those things goes away. Because each day... The letting go process is the healing process as well. So whenever people, you know, because don't think for one second, my family is not walking around this very moment talking about I'm holding grudges against my father. I'm holding no grudge against him. I just want him to die and go on about his business so I can stop hearing this drama right here. I let him go. 
and the only time those 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 um, uh, words come out of my come out of my mouth that I want him to go on about his business is when family members bring his issue to me talking about I need to talk to him when I know that he is irredeemable. So if I know that he's irredeemable, why should I hurt myself more by trying to communicate with a bastard who ain't gonna do nothing but burn me again? It's all about self preservation. See this 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 whole subject is 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 deep. That's just like when you look at the movie Frankenstein and when you read the book Frankenstein, Frankenstein is going to ask him, Why did you make me this way? Why did you make me this way? Okay. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the man who created him. Who would we be saying that to? Our father and dad. Why did you make me like this? Why did you make me like this? Why did you make me hate you? And did Victor Frankenstein have an answer in the movie or the book? Check it out. He didn't have an answer. Because he didn't give a fuck. He didn't care. So who's the real monster? How much abuse? Who's the monster, Josh? They are. They are the ones without the stars. We're nothing but angels with broken wings. That's all it is. It's a beautiful study. And you know, so when when she said, you, you are a monster, Tariq. Just like I am. And as soon as you accept that, you'll be okay. So sometimes you gotta admit that you're hurt and you're twisted and you're deranged. And the moment you accept that, that's when humility come in. And once humility come in, that's when you have a choice to find your morality within that state of being or become a worse monster. Right. A lot of times, so, like you said, you be wanting yours to die. What I be like, I feel that same way. And I'm like, and I and it's crazy. I think I told you this before, but I think about that happening for to him way more than I should. And I've been thinking that mm-hmm. ever since I was a teenager. And like, you no know, son should feel that way about their father or whatever. But I do feel that way, you know. It's not your fault, though. No. We say because I think it's, it's it's not your fault that you feel like that. You didn't just come out of your mother's womb feeling like that about your father. It's not that you don't have a reasoning based upon experience to feel like that about your father. Your father gave you a reason, reasoning, an intelligence, a doctrine, you know, a diagram of the reason why you feel that way about him. It's not us, it is them. It's them, it's their creation. Now, the religious community and, and the, 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 the common um, the people in the world, even their, their content, even their context is based upon the religious experience, holding grudge. That's how the world say you're holding on grudges. The religious people say you need to forgive them. The conscious community say you have to raise yourself into a higher vibration. What the hell do those people know? They don't know anything. Right. So that's why I say I don't deal with positive. I don't deal with negative. I deal with reality. It is the reality. And and once you understand your reality, that's when humility comes in. And it's easy for you to say, well, let this go. Let it go. Okay, another part. Tariq was 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 faced with that decision. Do I become a worse monster, or do I become another kind of monster? Like the whole Riddick concept at the beginning of um, Chronicles of Riddick. Right. When she said, "If I could run," she said, "I would." Because he was getting ready to blast her, bro. He was getting ready. I saw it in Tariq's eyes. I'm like, he is getting ready to do it. He, he's really getting ready to turn it to his father. 
But then when she said, if I could run, I would. She said, okay, well, I'm going to give her some money to run. She chose another path. Self, self-preservation. Yeah, this 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 episode is uh, a deep episode. Yeah, you know we got one more episode next Sunday, so I can't wait to see what they pop off. Yeah, yeah, because um, oh, when Monet showed up in Homegirl's office. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. She just, she, just, you know, she was sitting there waiting. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah. she, you know, Ramona. It's like it's almost like she's omnipresent in the way that she moves or whatever. It's like she know everything. Yeah, I, I think her her um, her um, basic character is based on her being omnipresent. There's hardly anything that get by her. I'll be, I'll be cracking up the way. At least it's the way the Mary J. Player is funny to me. You know, I don't know if that's, a, yeah. I don't know if that's because of her acting skills or her lack of acting skills, but the way she played Monique, you have me tripping. How she always seemed to know everything as far as well. Uh, because every time she's like, "What the f is going on?" <laughs> and stuff like that, what, trip me out when she, when she act like that. Well, well, that's the writing. That's, that's the way the writing is is, is put together. That, that's the writing, and so that's that's why I was saying her character, you her her, her um, character, you know, as far as as the writing is concerned, her personality is 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 based upon a, a person who has a who has a omnipresence, you know, personality. She's always there. She's always there around the corner. You need to tell mom. Tell me what. See, she's she's omnipresent. Oh, the, the the other situation I was I was dealing with was I was listening to a conversation that we had back in 2016, and um, it it was about um my um uh, granddad. Are you talking about Mr. Kelly? Yeah. yeah. And, and um, how I was robbed of a um relationship with him you know and how my mother told me that uh, you are not to call him grandfather you you call him junior you know and um that's that's pretty much what what that was about you know i'm i'm, I'm always going to be overly sensitive about my grandfather due to the fact i i was close to him in a sense, but all at the same time, I never had a relationship with him, a, a, a real uh, grandfather and, and grandson relationship with him. You know, that that was robbed from me, you know, so I was going into uh, how very much important it is to fulfill every level of relationship in your life and your children's life and, you know. You know, it kind of got me out of shape, you know, because um, I forgot that my Uncle Gerald had um, told me that he always wanted me to come live with them. And um, when I heard myself say that, I'm like, damn, that is right, you know. He did want me to come stay with him and his um, new family because Gerald and them, even though you know they're my uncles and my nieces, they looked at me as a, a little brother, you know, because I, I think it's because I look so much like him. Right. You do, fight. but um, yeah. And so when I heard that, it it took took me inside. And I'm like, he wanted me to come live with him. You know, so he 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 had a desire because he wanted me to come live with him. And you know, and, and all of that was taken from me. And so by him wanting me to come live with him, I looked at the way that he he, he treated all of his, his his sons in his new family outside of the way that he he treated his other sons who were my uncles and all of them. And he 
had, had gotten to the point in his life to where he actually wanted to be a better human being. So so he, he treated Gerald and Adaro and Andrea and, you know, all of them real good. I mean, he really treated them good. And he wanted me to be, to be a part of that family so that he can instill that in me because he knew that my daddy wasn't no damn good. And you got robbed of him treating you like I got robbed of that too. You know, so that's that's what I was um, upset about earlier. You know, yeah, man. But don't don't let that grudge stuff bother you. Oh, okay, yeah, man. people don't. Yeah, thanks for the confirmation. I'm, I was I was like, man, that don't even sound like you know how people. Pretty much all this conventional wisdom stuff that people say is BS. Yeah, because it, you know it's, it's it's nothing but a whole bunch of platitudes put together from traditional conversations. You know, because whenever you hear people talk like that, those are not original thoughts. Right. If I've heard it somewhere before, I ain't trying to hear it. Well, you hold hold it on to the past, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold it on to the past. The way that you put those words together, you've heard those same words from someone else. So don't think you're saying something original because you're not. That's a common saying. Therefore, to me, it's nothing but a platitude. And and when people come out and say things like you're holding on to the past, you're holding you're holding a grudge. See, those are platitudes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those those are convenient platitudes that people um, imbue in 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 conversations that they're having with people and they use those phrases at a convenient point in the conversation. Right. And that's just to arrest you and accuse you of being a certain way without them understanding why you feel that way. Yeah. And, and so you you have to get to the point to where you just don't give a damn. What what um, people say, right? And how and, and how they feel about who you are, and 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 what you've been made to be. You can't worry about that. I mean, of course you you're gonna worry about it for for a little while because you want to be understood and you want people to understand you. But then you have to get to the point to where who the hell is anybody else that that I should care if they understand me or not. You all you gotta let that die too, and that go. Mm-hmm. Like you are all you need, right? You know, and and that's what people don't understand about me today. So David, he, he just walks around here and he he just acts like he don't care about nothing. He don't. <laughs> he, don't. <laughs> he don't. But is but is he walking around here disrespecting anybody? No. Okay, well, obviously he cares about something because he's he's not walking around here disrespecting people. He cares about himself. That's why he's respectable. That's why he's courteous. That's why he tells people to go over there on the other side of the street and don't mess with me because he cares about himself. Get away from me. I'm not going to let you disturb my peace of mind. Go over there and say, hey, dude, go over there. Go over there with that. You know? I'm respectable, I'm courteous, but I know BS when I know it'll get ready to approach me. Go over there and get out of my face. Right. I mean, that's that's a part of self-preservation. You keep people away from you so that they won't get, bring you bad experiences that you're going to have to endure and heal from. Go over there and get the hell out of my face. I ain't going to let you hurt me. I ain't going to let you disturb me. Yeah, yeah. You try to live in a, a, and as much as an abuse-free life as possible, basically. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's pretty much it right there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That comes from experience. Yeah.